I have a word for the church that came to me this morning by the Lord in a dream. I want to remind everyone of something first before I give you this word. It is important to remember that all of mankind sins, whether we mean to or not. But the closer you walk with Jesus, the less you are supposed to sin. The closer you walk with Jesus, the more you will be refined. Even the twelve apostles were not perfect in all of their ways. Peter struggled with pride, and he overestimated who he was in Jesus. Thomas struggled with faith. Thomas was a doubter, even through all of the things that he saw Jesus do, and even though he heard the things Jesus told as he walked with him. And of course, the biggest sinner of them all was Judas. Though he walked with Jesus for three and a half years, he obviously did not take to heart the things that Jesus said. Judas obviously believed that Jesus was a heretic. So though Judas walked with Jesus, he wasn't a believer. Jesus told a man that there was none good but the Father. Jesus realized that even he himself was susceptible to sin while he was in the flesh. So what I am about to tell you, do not let it upset you, but take these words of the Lord and use them to search yourself. Ask yourself if you have any hidden sins in your life. Then take them to the Lord repenting and asking for forgiveness then allow okay so I had this dream this morning just before six o'clock in my dream my aunt picked me up for church when we got to church before I got out of the car I decided that I didn't want to be there I had on this short dress and okay this is going to sound embarrassing but I realized that I hadn't shaved my legs so I was feeling really self-conscious. I kind of thought, well, if I go into the church, people are going to see me like this, and they're going to say things about me, and they'll probably laugh at me. So I get out of the car, and I tell my aunt that I changed my mind, and I'm not going, or that I'm going to go home. This church was a big church, and it was just down the street from my apartment. As I begin to go around the car, there's a suitcase, or baggage, on the back of the car and I inadvertently bumped it and caused it to fall over spilling out everything that was inside there were some clothing some lingerie really personal intimate stuff in the suitcase I began trying to pick it up and someone started helping me and that was the end of the dream then I woke up after I began to wake up I was trying to understand this dream and what it was all about and the Holy Spirit began revealing to me that I was a rep a representation of the bride of Christ. Wearing the short dress and having the unshaven legs was symbolic of revealing a lot more of myself than I wanted to and that made me feel vulnerable. So in deciding not to go into the church I didn't want to stand before God or before my peers. I just wanted to hide this part of myself. But then I bumped the suitcase which was symbolic of baggage and everything inside fell out. My most intimate things. But after this was revealed to me, I began thinking, but I don't have anything that I feel embarrassed of, and I don't have anything in my life that I'm trying to hide from God or from all of you, so why was I getting this message? The Holy Spirit revealed that it was for the entire church. The Lord was telling me that the church is trying to hide things that are causing each one of you to shy away from God because it's making you feel uncomfortable around Him and in front of each other. He's saying that whatever you try to hide will be revealed to all. If you're struggling with anything, even things that you may not even know that you have in your life, get away from it. Give it to God. Repent of your sins because if you don't, it will be revealed to everyone. God's judgment is coming upon the church, and right now is the time to break free from those bondages that still have a hold of you. Right now is the time to settle your differences. Give up the works of the flesh and reconcile yourself to God. Let Jesus purify you in his blood. Let him wash you clean of all worldliness. Let him separate you to himself. Remember, his word says that he will not share you with anyone else. He is a jealous God, and we cannot enter into the temple unclean. The Lord is coming quickly, and if you don't want to be left behind, you must be sure to make yourself spotless. You must be sure to get your spiritual house clean and ready for him. This is a harsh message for those of you who still have things that you ought not to have in your life. But I told you, don't get mad at me. 
I'm telling you this because I'm being obedient to the Lord. And he is telling you this because he's trying to give you your best chance for eternity. He doesn't want to leave any of you behind. But right now, he's lamenting because a lot of you aren't ready. So please, let this be an opportunity for you. Let the Holy Spirit convict you and wash over you. Pray that the Lord may help you, guiding you and directing you in his ways, remolding you so that you may be more like him. Pray that he may break the bondages in your life so that you may be free to walk with him. Pray that the Lord may cleanse you and purify you, making you ready for him. And pray that you may be counted worthy to go with him when he comes. I do love you all, and I do hope that you may take this message and allow it to help you with your walk with the Lord. I don't know what you're all going through, but understand that you are not alone. We're all going through these things together, and we have the Lord to help us too. The enemy is always going to come at us, looking for ways to break us down and cause us to sin and fall away from the Lord. Every day is a battle that we must fight. Every day we must pick up our cross and allow ourselves to sacrifice for salvation. The Lord Jesus died so that we may have salvation. And every day we must pick up our crosses and die to the world and to the flesh so that we may walk in that salvation. It's up to you whether or not you want to have that salvation or not. Only you can determine whether you live or die. It is not enough to go to church every week. We must seek God each and every day at the beginning of our day by praying, by reading the word, and by spending time with the Lord. Praise him and worship him daily. Know that we must work for our salvation, not in the works of worldly things, but by doing those things that we have been called to do and by denying ourselves those things that are not of God. If you abide in him, he will abide in you.